Hello everybody, Salty Canuck here again, eh? And once again, I have another article here on the ongoing Bud Light and Hearts of Bush saga. I thought this was an interesting one. This comes from a, um, a UK online paper called The Spectator. And it's titled, Bud Light Fought the Blue Collar War. And the war won. Interesting title, twist on words there. It's done by a guy named, uh, or a journalist named Freddie Gray, dated May 31st. And uh, here's a picture of the Bud Light can. And I thought it was interesting to read, so I want to read this to you and uh, talk about it as we go through. It says, if Budweiser is the king of beers, as its slogan claims, then Bud Light has long been the queen. Launched over 40 years ago in 1982, and now the world's most successful low-calorie beer, B-minus occupies a funny sweet spot in America's sprawling consumer conscience. So what this guy's trying to do is explain how Bud Light got into the mindset of a huge swath of Americans. And we all know that Bud Light has some nicknames, right? Also known as Redneck Soda. Frat water, turtle jizz, and I'm sure there's a bunch out there that you guys have your own pet names for it. But and, how, and after this controversy, I'm sure there's some really, really good names for Bud Light now, right? I bet you could probably know in the comments what you've been calling Bud Light lately. Bud Light is a product that conveys a mass marketable sense of irony. That's what admin dream about. All right. But then. Two months ago, Anheuser-Busch, Bud's parent company, did something stupid. And yeah, it was definitely stupid. Some marketing whiz, we all know who that was, Alicia Hunch or Schmuck or whatever her name is, decided it would be a super proactive to partner up, as marketing drones like to say, with the trans influencer Dylan Mulvaney. And Mulvaney promoted a can with her, his face on it to celebrate his her first anniversary as a member of the opposite sex. This went viral in all the wrong ways and tapped into a social force that is now far more potent than blue-collar irony. The blue-collar culture war. There you have it, guys. We have started a blue-collar Culture war. Bud Light and its marketing gurus woke us up. We had enough of this crap, and now we're going after them with our pocketbooks. An angry online reaction began. Yeah, I remember the Kid Rock video? Loved that ad with him shooting the cans. And just kept gathering speed, you know, like the memes. Oh my God, they were hilarious. Mass boycotts continued. Right up to this Memorial Day weekend, it's just been getting worse. An anti-Bud hashtag sprouted up everywhere. And now sales are down almost 30% year on year. Retailers, as we know and we've, and we've read about and talked about, are slashing the price of Bud Light and Anheuser shares are crashing. Of course, other economic factors are at play. And Bud Light has been losing market share, and money hand over fist to Coors Light and other competitors for some time now. Nonetheless, the Mulvaney stunt could be remembered as one of the worst marketing missteps in history. Yeah, I constantly keep saying that. Publicly, publicity isn't always good publicity. And in a cost of living crisis such as we are in right now, when rage-addicted Americans, not just Americans, Canadians, I'm Canadian, can instantly share their fury together. A major online blunder can cost millions, and it's saying billions. And as we know, as of right now, apparently it's $27 billion. Yeah. I think we're doing a damn good job, guys, showing our anger. Presumably blind, blinded by woke corporate thinking, Budweiser forgot the secret of its own success. Maybe Budweiser marketeers should, should read this article. 
From its launch in 1982, Anheuser successfully pitched Bud Light as a low-calorie lager that men drink. That was no mean feat. No, it isn't. Because what you're trying to sell is diet beer, right? You don't want to say diet beer. Saying low-calorie lager, well, that could work. And it did. Bud Light didn't have as much taste. Yeah, it tastes like piss water. It wasn't as fattening as traditional beer is. But it was also refreshingly no-nonsense. Okay. I think the, uh, the journalist is doing a pretty good job of describing this. Anheuser's trick was to realize that working-class Americans, that's us blue-collar guys, the primary consumers of beer, mind you, weren't allergic to the idea of diet beer. On the contrary, American men love nothing more, and Canadians, than boozing and watching sports like football, hockey, all that stuff for hours and hours. Because it's fun. So Bud Light turned out to be the perfect drink, right? You can guzzle it down all day because it's light. And you still get plastered because it's 4.2%. And the more trashy the brand became in the eyes of snobs, the more the blue-collar men, which is a lot of men, or LARPing, LARPing college kids, adored Bud Light as something authentic and unstuffy. It's so fake, it's real. That made Bud Light easily America's most popular beer. Not anymore. But then it met Dylan Mulvaney. And that's where this article ends by Freddie Gray. I thought it was a really good read. And you know what? It gave me a good insight because uh, I'm Canadian. I'm just, the insight, it's very similar. I, I, I do believe that. You know, it's that. You know, uh, low alcohol content beer. It's it basically it's your diet beer, right? But they call it, uh, you know, a light beer, right? And sure, had all those nicknames like what was that? Uh, Redneck soda, frat water, turtle jizz. And I'm sure it's got a lot of new nicknames right now that uh, have been showing up on the memes and that, right? But anyways, I thought it was a really good take. And you know what? That's the blue collar war. And guess what? The war won. We as blue collar. We're not putting up with this crap anymore. And what a stupid marketing decision from Anheuser-Busch. And it's cost him $27 billion and counting. Wow. What a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Anyways, guys, well, there you have it. That's uh, my take from this article here. I am a salty Canuck here. And uh, I appreciate you getting it this far. And I do appreciate the people that, I, that have been viewing my content. Thank you so much. And it, be great if you're new here to subscribe to my channel, hit the bell notification. And also, uh, apparently my kids tell me if you like it, then it'll help the algorithm. So that would be great too. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll get some more articles out there. Salty Canuck signing off.